Hey everybody, we are back for our deep dive looking through the Bible. And we have started to unpack uh, the nitty gritty about how and when and why the Bible started to be formed in the way that it is. Uh, last week we looked at some of the oldest um, documents that we have um, that um, are from the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. And we said that one of the oldest things that was found was actually a set of jewelry with um, that verse from Numbers that says, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. It's a really amazing thing. Um, now, today we are going to focus on um, how the Bible actually, the, the, the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, started to be written down. We've already talked in this series that for uh, most of uh, ancient history, um, laws, stories, uh, history was actually passed down orally through spoken word. And people back then had this amazing capacity to hear and memorize and retell the story. We looked at how Deuteronomy chapter 6 kind of gives us that sort of picture for Jewish society that um, the, these people would be able to learn. They'd learn the, um, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, um, and they would memorize it and they would repeat it over and over and over and over and over again so that they had it down pat. And if someone repeated the wrong thing, they would be corrected like, no, that's not it. This is the story. And they were able to um, repeat this uh, just orally without writing things down from generation to generation. And um, as I've talked about before, um, we've, there's been research about how accurate um, the transmission of history and stories from these oral cultures have been. For the most part, um, there is no reason back in the ancient world to actually write things down. The reason was because it was expensive to write things down, um, and not a lot of people knew how to read and write back then. So it was only kind of members of um, the royal society or highly educated people um, who were able to read and write. And uh, to get someone to write things down um, usually cost a lot of money back then. It wasn't cheap. And not only that, but the tools that, and instruments they had to write things down, so like papyrus or sheepskin, it wouldn't last very long. Um, and so they would constantly have to uh, make copies um, as those materials degraded over time. And so it was an expensive endeavor. So for most of the history of the Hebrew Bible, people would pass down stories orally. However, this started to change during the period of the exile. So you may remember, if you have been listening in the past uh, through our series through um, yeah, the Torah and the history of the Old Testament over the last two years, that um, the kingdoms of Israel and Judah split, and they kind of existed side by side um, for a period of time. But uh, eventually those nations kind of turned away from God, and God sent these people called the prophets to them to say, turn back or uh, I'm going to let um, yeah, your sin overtake you. The consequences of your rebellion, I'm just going to lift my blessing and protection from you and just let what you want happen, happen. That uh, you want a world uh, without me in it, uh, I'll, let, I'll let you have that. And so um, in uh, yeah, 586 BC, uh, 587 BC, the southern kingdom of Judah eventually gets conquered by Babylon. And before that, in about 712 BC, the northern kingdom of Israel gets conquered by Syria. Why this is important is because when these nations came in um, to Israel and Judah and kind of destroyed them, they burned everything. So all the documents that they had, which probably weren't very, um, there weren't very many of them, but all the records of history that we had, and even kind of the stone tablets of the Ten Commandments that would have been kept in the temple were utterly destroyed. And so the records that um, were preserved by the Jewish kind of royalty and scribes all got destroyed in, in one go. And as the people went to exile, there was this sort of realization that 
um, we need to be able to copy um, these things because now all our people are spread out all over the place and we need to be able to retain this information so that as people have moved from Babylon to Assyria to Egypt to all these different places that um, they'll have a record of our stories and our laws. Um, you actually can find this in um, 2 Kings chapter 22 where Josiah, who's the king of Judah at the time, um, is having pays for the temple to be restored. It had been in disarray because most of the people and the kings before had abandoned God and turned to these other foreign gods to worship. And as he's refurbishing the temple, someone bashes a hole in the wall and finds a book of the law, which is probably the book of Deuteronomy. And Josiah reads it. He is cut to the core and he realizes we have not obeyed God. He tears his clothes and he um, yeah, proclaims this reformation that takes place in um, the land of Judah, um, and uh, which involved the copying of all these documents and being able to give them to all the people again. In Jeremiah chapter 36, as the uh, nation of Babylon is encroaching in and about to conquer uh, Judah, um, God tells Jeremiah to write these words down. Um, even though the, you're, these people are not listening to you, you need to write these words down. And eventually the king um, of Judah at the time finds Jeremiah's words. He burns all his scrolls. And then God tells him again, uh, write these things down. These need to be preserved so that uh, when the exile does happen and everyone's scattered, um, that we have these records that can be uh, produced and copied and spread to all these different groups of people who have now been spread all over the, the world. And so we have this increase in um, our records of all these documents from the period of the exile, so from about 586 onwards, where... Um, Whereas before, the, the people of Israel and Judah maybe didn't think that they ought to, um, yeah, write things down as often because they could pass things down uh, orally. But then uh, there was this incident at the exile where people started to say, no, we need to be able to write these things down now so that, um, yeah, we can continue to uh, tell our stories to the next generation who are all spread out around the world. It's a pretty cool uh, thing that we see, and you see this throughout the prophets, um, especially that they are all kind of not just speaking these sermons in public places, but that these words are being recorded, copied, preserved, and passed down. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about how all of these documents, now that they start to be kind of commonly written down and collected, how they start to actually be formed into one uh, book called the Canon We'll talk about that next week. But for our purposes today, it's pretty cool that, um, yeah, not only in, uh, in history we have this tradition of these stories and laws being memorized, passed down accurately from one generation to the next, but that during times of crisis, like during the exile, people saw the need to record and write these things down and preserve them for um, the people who are being scattered and uh, whose, yeah, whose words and documents have been kind of destroyed by foreign nations because they realize how important God's word is, that we need to, yeah, not, not forget these things. We need to preserve them. So I'll leave you with that today, and we'll jump in more next week. Uh, for now, uh, that's it. We'll see you later. Bye.